Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. I'm putting in an extra video this week because of everything that's going on in our world right now. Uh, our city has put out a call to all the sewers in our area to make face masks. And I know this is going on in other cities as well. And even though this um, sur it was a surgery center in our town, they didn't ask for a specific pattern to be made, but they did ask for a couple of features that they want in the mask. First of all, they want it made out of a tightly woven fabric, which uh, quilting cottons would be good for that. Uh, they need a pocket in it so that they can put um, a non-woven material in there for a filter. And they need it to be pleated so that it can cover the mouth and the nose and they wanted elastic around the ears and they also wanted a wire in the upper piece so that it would conform around the nose so those are all features that you can see in most surgical masks anyway um, now as a nurse as a retired nurse uh, i spent countless hours wearing a surgical mask so i know the features that i like and that make a mask comfortable for me so I also took that into consideration so um, I want to show you the pattern that I have come up with and the supplies that you're going to need if you want to do this project yourself so uh, first thing you're going to need is fabric of course and um, I've got some fun print here a fun print and this is kind of just a tone on tone you're going to need some pins you're going to need for a wire I'm going to use um, some chenille stems or pipe cleaners you could use um, I just looked around my house I have some stem wire for flower making and this is an 18 gauge and this is flexible enough that it will work really well and I've got enough here to make quite a few masks because you only need a piece that's about seven inches long um, you could use um, bread ties, bag ties um, that come like with trash bags. Sometimes they'll come with extra ties. You can use those. You can use a paper clip that is straightened out. Um, you know, there's other things you could probably come up with that you could use. Uh, you'll need a pair of wire cutters and they don't have to be heavy duty, um, especially with these chenille stems, they cut real easily. So these are a pair of jewelry making uh, pliers or wire cutters that I have. So I'm using those. You need quarter inch elastic and this is a knit elastic and there's other kinds of elastic that you can use and um, you need your sewing machine you need thread uh, you want to put a heavy duty needle in there I'm using a size 14 in my machine and um, that's about it uh, first off with your fabric what you're going to need for the main piece the piece that is going to show like here in these two the front fabric you're going to need a piece that is 10 by 8 now for the lining you're going to need two pieces and you'll need one that is seven by seven and a half and then you'll need one that is seven by three so um this is what's going to go on the inside this is the part that will face the face and it will be a pocket so that they can put their filter material in there. And then for your elastic, you'll need two pieces that are about seven and a quarter to seven and a half inches long. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's a good, that's a good fit for my face anyway, is seven and a quarter inches. Okay, and your chenille stem or your wire, you'll need to cut this at seven inches also. And of course you're going to need your iron so i got my pieces cut and the first thing i'm going to do is to take these lining pieces and i'm going to make i'm going to fold down the on the seven inch side i'm going to fold this down about half an inch and i'm going to press it and then i'm going to do the same with the smaller piece along the seven inch side which is the long side on this one and press okay now we need to sew this down and I'm just going to go you know close to the edge 
close to the raw edge of it. And then I'll take the other piece and just follow right in after it. Okay, my stitch length is at 2.5. It's just a regular stitch length. Okay, those are done. Now we're going to go back to the ironing surface. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the center. I'm going to put the right sides up. And I just need to find the center of one side. So I'm just going to fold it and then just press that little edge right there and then I'm going to take the short piece and on the raw edge I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it in half and find the center of it and then open this up and then I'm going to match right sides together match the centers and have the raw edges even and then I'm going to take some pins and I'm going to pin this in place. And then I'm going to take the larger piece and do the same and just line these pieces up, the two blue pieces to them to each other and then the raw edges down here and then pin at the raw edges. And then we're going to go back to the sewing machine. Now here I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance and I'm going to sew on both sides of this piece here. And you don't have to back stitch if you don't want to because it will have some extra stitching going over it later that will secure it. I'm going to pull my pins as I go. again and then cut the threads and cut them on both sides okay then flip it around do the same thing a half inch seam allowance the ironing board. Okay what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and press these open and double check make sure your short piece is at the top of your fabric and I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to I'm going to roll this over along that seam line that I stitched along that seam line that I stitched and then I'm going to press that and you can use seam if you want to and do the same on this side just right along that seam and just press it all the way across Okay, now I'm going to flip this open and I need my chenille stem. It needs to be 7 inches, which is the length across here. So I'm going to mark that with my finger and then I'm going to cut it. There we go. And now I'm going to fold this in by about half an inch. So I'm just going to make a little L shape and then just bend it down. And that'll keep that wire from 
poking anybody in their face. So now we're going to put it in the seam allowance, fold it down, and I want to make sure that it is fairly even so that I don't have, let me turn it this way, maybe you'll see better. Um, I don't want it over to one side, I want it fairly even. Now this will want to shift because of the nap of the chenille. So you can put it on this side or you can put it on this side, either one. It doesn't really matter, just whatever you want to do. I think, though for comfort, I think it would be better on this side because there's more padding between the person's face and that wire, so I put it in there. Now I'm just going to put a couple pins in here really close to that wire to kind of keep it from shifting. And now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. Okay, now I've noticed something on this piece here, um, the flap that this is going to go over the short one, but this is a little bit high up, so I am going to go ahead and fold this under one more time and stitch this down so that I have a little more leeway here. So I have this one about a half inch too big. I must have mismeasured when I cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that down. So if that happens to you, there's not a uh, big problem there. You just need to add another little bit of stitching. Okay, now I'm going to flip that out of my way. And I want to get sew in here close to that wire. Just to encase it. And if you have a zipper foot, um, that would be a good place to use it. And it doesn't have to be really tied up against it because you're going to be encasing this on the sides here anyway, so it won't be shifting around. So if you have a half inch seam allowance there, you're doing fine. And then trim the threads. One thing I would suggest um, that when you finish with these, check and make sure you have all of your threads trimmed really close to the fabric because those little hairs, little threads sticking out, those will really bother the person who's wearing the mask, so you don't want to do that. Okay, now I'm going to sew the sides down. Um, you don't have to backstitch on this. This is just to make it easier for you to pleat. I'm going to do it on both sides. Sew down here, just about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch from that raw edge. More like an eighth of an inch is what I'm doing here. And you don't need to backstitch, just um, sew from edge to edge. And just flip it around and do the other side. Okay. Now let's go back to the ironing surface and I'll show you when I'm how I'm going to pleat this. Okay, so we're going to turn it right sides, right side up, and then we're going to pleat this. Now, um, now it needs three pleats in it. You can see in this one here, I have one, two, three pleats in it. And the same on this one. Uh, the difference between these two is I had the seam the pocket is opens up in the center and that may be a little bit harder to get a uh, filter in there in my opinion so I wanted to raise this up and make it higher 
and I think this would be a lot easier to get that in. So anyway, that's my opinion. Okay, now to put the pleats in here, I want my first pleat to not cover up this pocket so that they can find it real easily. So I'm going to fold this um, over so that that pocket is not hidden. Okay, so you're going to fold this one in about an inch and a half. And you can measure it on both sides if you want to to make sure you've got it pretty much even. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to press this. Then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to make this pleat about a half an inch deep. So you can also measure that if you have a ruler that you can measure it with or just, you know, use your best judgment. It doesn't have to be exact. The main thing about these pleats is that you want them to face down like this one. The, pl the pleats are facing down. This is the top. Not like this. You don't want them to face up. You want them to face down. Okay, now we're going to make this... Um, we're gonna go, I'm going to go ahead and pin these so that they will stay in place. And then I'm going to go down about an inch make a second pleat, make it about a half inch deep, and press that. And if you want to use steam, go ahead, that'll help because you're folding a couple layers of fabric there. Pin these in place. And go down about another inch and make another half inch pleat. And you can either, you can pin them first or you can pin them after you press. It doesn't matter. And if you have to make one pleat a little bit shorter than the others, that's not going to hurt anything either. There we go. That looks pretty good. Give that a good press. Okay. So here we go. Now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. Okay, now to uh, make it easier to finish off this edge, what I'm going to do is do a little bit of sewing. I want to keep these pleats down. So on this seam that I sewed here for to hold the lining in, I'm going to stitch right along that line of stitching again, and that will help hold the pleats down. Then I'm going to stitch close to the raw edge and do the same thing. Okay, then I'm going to flip it around and do the same thing on this side. Just follow this line of stitching. stitch close to the raw edge.
and make sure those pleats go in there flat since they're oops you're kind of uh, fighting against them because they're they'll want to flip up because of the way they're folded here You really don't have to back stitch on those because that will be encased. So let's go back and do some more pressing. Okay, so here's what we have so far. We got raw edges here. We got our pleats in uh, this side. The pocket is right here. And we're going to work from the back side right now. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and press this, fold this up to that raw edge of the lining. I'm just going to fold that and press it. And use steam if you want to, if you have it, and do the same to this side. Okay, I'm going to go on this side since it should be cooled off. Now I'm going to fold this so that the raw edges meet. So these raw edges meet the raw edge here and then fold it one more time. And then press that. And just be very careful of your fingers. Okay, and this will unfold, but you've got those creases in there that will stay, but it will kind of unfold on itself. But we're going to stitch that down here in just a minute and we'll be done. Okay, back to the sewing machine. So you can see here how those edges are. Just fold them in like that. Okay, now we're going to go back to the sewing machine and now we need our pieces of elastic. I have my mask and I have my elastic. What I have here is a piece that is seven and one quarter inches. Now this is what is comfortable for my face wearing a face mask. If it's you have um, a different size face or a different shaped face, you'll need a different length. And if you're making these for a man, you will need it longer. So what I have seen from doing research, these can be anywhere from seven inches to eight inches and that will cover a lot of people so i'm doing seven and a quarter because that seems to be a, a good size for me and i don't think i've got an unusually small face though it probably is is, is on the large smaller side but anyway you know, makes, I'm going to make some that are longer and some that are shorter. So I'm going to tuck this in here about a half an inch and just roll that over and I'm going to keep it close to the outside fold. If you can see that here, it's close to this outside, it's close to this outside fold as opposed to this one. So it's going to go in about a half an inch. It doesn't really need to go any further than that. And now I'm going to sew it and I'm going to go over this a couple of times. So I'm going to start off of the fabric and work my way on. Go across that elastic and then back stitch. Come forward. Back stitch again. And then come forward really close to that inner fold. And I'm going to stop with my needle down. And I'm going to pivot make sure my fabric is all tucked in lower my presser foot and then stitch close to that edge now this is where it could get difficult because you're going through multiple layers so make sure you have a heavier needle in like one at about a 14 and take your time now before I go off the edge I want to take this elastic and I just want to roll it over and bring it back and I'm going to lift my presser foot again and I'm going to tuck this in just like I did on the other side. It's going to go in about half an inch and tucked up against that outer fold. I'm going to sew all the way down 
close to the edge. Stop with the needle down. Pivot my fabric. <laughs> and if this happens, just tuck this right back in. And it should go in. If you have to raise your presser foot, do that. Okay. And then back stitch again. Go forward. Back stitch again. Come forward close to the edge. And just stitch right off the edge. Actually, you don't have to get close, just stitch right off the edge. And cut your threads. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So I'm going to lay this. You can see, if I hold this up, this is going to go right here about, about a half of an inch in. And if you need to pin that in place instead of holding it in place, then do that. That's fine. Do whatever makes it easy for you. I can get all my threads going where I want them to go. Here we go. Okay. Front, back. Stitch close to the edge. Top of the needle down. I'm going to go back. There we go. I overshot my mark there. And then stitch down. Just take your time. this, swing it around, and then tuck this in by about half an inch. And then stitch across. Okay, now we're done. And trim all your loose threads. Make sure you got them trimmed close to the fabric so your healthcare worker doesn't feel like they have spiders crawling on their face. So here we go. Okay, here we have a fabric face mask. It has a wire in it so it can be shaped to the face. And I, uh, a lot of places will say they just need a short wire in there, but I'll tell you from experience that if you can get a wire longer in there and shape it for your nose as well as your cheeks, you get a much better fit. It has a pocket in it right here so that a filter can go inside. And it has elastic for the ear goes around the ears it's stretchy so if it's too tight um, you know you have some stretch there so that it'll be more comfortable and it has the three pleats in it so it opens wide so let me show you what this looks like when I put it on okay these I've worn glasses since I was 19 or 20 so um, and I did wear contacts at one point so I didn't have to worry about a ma my mask while I was wearing glasses, but anyway, it goes either way. Just wrap around your nose, go around your ears, and pull it down. This is what it looks like with my glasses on. There's what it looks like with them off. So it fits pretty well. There's a little bit of a gap here, but I found there's a little bit of a gap there on the side. I don't know if you can hear me with this on, but I found that is happens with paper masks too so um, 
you know this is a little bit tighter snugger fit though so I think this is actually better than what those paper masks are which I don't even know where I put that one here it is so here's a paper mask works the same way in fact this one wants to go up into my eyeballs comes down and see you still have this little it's not really a gap it's a pleat kind of a pleat it makes a pleat there and this one does the same thing so there you go so if you're uh, community is asking for face masks um, just follow their their request as to what kind of features they want if they want a specific pattern I would give them what they want because they don't have time to mess around with an ill-fitting mask so if they are asking for a shaped mask that does not have pleats in it don't send them one of these now our place uh, our surgery center here in town was asking for the pleated masks. They don't want the shaped masks. So um, this is what I'm making for them. And they want the wire in it. Um, you'll find some videos on YouTube. If if you don't need a wire, you know, just don't put it in. That's all, all you have to do. Uh, there are some other videos that have different ways to put the elastic in. Um, some are just two layers with no pocket for filter so if your community is not wanting the filter pocket then you don't have to put that in and it's it just kind of cuts down a little bit on the work that you have to do but these still this will go pretty fast um, once you get started get get two or three done and from there it'll you can streamline the process and it'll go really fast um, if you are out of elastic and there is none in your area or you're you know still under um, you know the quarantine uh, rules and you don't want to get out and you can't get any ordered in um, make ties you don't have to use elastic um, just use um, single fold bias tape and you can fold that in half you can make your own bias tape fold it in half so it's about an eighth of an inch wide and just make them long make them about 12 inches long 12 to 18 inches long so that they will go around the person's head and around their neck so you want to make them long enough that they can tie a bow in the back there and keep them secure and people wear their masks different ways um, when I actually when I was in nursing we did not have the elastic we had the ties and I always had a ponytail so I tied one up on my ponytail and one under the nape of my neck nurses who didn't have ponytails just tied them to the back of their head so and some would crisscross them so if you have about 18 inches of uh, a tie that's plenty um, you can use ribbon uh, you can make your own bias tape you can use pre-made bias tape um, you can use maybe the selvage off of um, some fabric if you have it and just just make sure those edges are finished so that they don't fray and break so you don't have to worry about it being stretchy you just need ties so I was fortunate that I had been given given several skeins of elastic um, a while back and I haven't done anything with it so when I was going through my sewing supplies I had plenty of elastic so I'm going to use this as long as I have it I'll make as many of these as I can I'm going to work on these throughout the week and then over the weekend they'll be um, taken to their their pickup area they have an area at the surgery center where they want them dropped off so I'll drop them off there or my husband will one of us will drop those off so uh, make them out of fun fabric you know we need we need something cheery so I've got kitties and puppy dogs and I have dog footprints and 
I have some bright colors. I have some florals. Um, you know, if you have tie-dye fabric, use tie-dye fabric. Use whatever you have. And uh, I hope you will have a good time doing this. And I know it'll be a blessing to your community and your surgery center and your hospitals, whoever needs these. So so in the meantime, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.